Welcome to The Rock, where you walk in with all your crap, you can leave it here and walk out a little lighter, literally and spiritually. <laughs> Our bathrooms work. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but they do. Hey, so a little birdie told me it's Owen's birthday. Hey. Owen, why don't you stand up, buddy? We're going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Owen. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Yay! Happy birthday, buddy. I hope you had a good party yesterday. <laughs> Well, welcome to The Rock. We're excited and blessed to have you guys here this morning. God, we thank you so, so much for every single person who has walked in here, whether that be the first service now or those tuning in online. God, as we go through, open up our hearts and our minds to you. Let us not be tainted from the things of our past, maybe previous church hurts if you're trying this for the first time. God, we are people and when you come and you're around more people, people hurt other people. And that's not a spirit of you, God, but that's just the spirit of the sin of the world. So God, if there is those hurts in here this morning, Jesus, heal those up. Let your Holy Spirit just pour out. Let us not be afraid to worship you with our hands, with our voices and with dancing. Let us not be afraid to try something new. And maybe that new thing is you. Not of what we've heard about you or maybe that we were taught younger, but God, that you that we can experience today, right now. And we thank you for that. As we go in through the word, God, open up our ears so that we can hear the message, so that we can hear your words and what you're here and pouring out for us. Let us be able to sink that in so we can learn. It says my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. God, let us soak in your knowledge this morning so that we can have it and we can apply it in our lives. And let us not be afraid to apply it. When we start changing our families and our start changing in our jobs and start changing within the people around us. Because a lot of times with that change, they may think you're odd or weird or just one of those Jesus people in the beginning. But God, those are the people who you send to us when the times get hard. And so that we're able to be their Bible in their lives. And we thank you for that knowledge today. And we thank you for that, amen. If you guys wanna stand up.
I don't know about you, but I thank God for the breakthroughs he's given us. We're going to do communion right now, and we're going to thank God for the things he's done. So if I ask you to help serve communion, would you please come and spread the love around? I don't know about you, but I am so thankful for what God's done in every life, and every heart, and every person. And it's all because of Jesus. Where would we be without him? I'll never know, but I thank God for his blood. And this morning, we're going to remember that covenant that Jesus gave to every single one of us. And when he sat there with his disciples that night, I don't think they even had an inkling of imagination of what Jesus was talking about, but we're blessed in that covenant. We're blessed in that place. We're blessed in that spot. And I thank God for that, and I praise God for that. Father, we thank you so much for all that your son's done for us. God, I thank you so much, Jesus, so much for coming on the cross, for giving your life for us. Thanks for your body that was broken. Thanks for your blood that was shed. Thank you for calling us by name, for every individual in this room. God, you knew they'd be here. It's not a surprise to you at all, but it was a divine appointment. And Father, I pray this morning as we remember your son's promise and his covenant and your promise and your covenant, God, that you'll keep it fresh in our hearts, that you said to do this in remembrance of you. There'll be a day that we'll sit at a marriage supper of the Lamb, and this will pass away, and it'll be done, never to be done again, but just a memory. But Lord, thanks for the hope that you've given us. Thanks for the joy you've given us. Thanks for the opportunities to serve you because you're so faithful. And Lord, we just appreciate you and love you this morning. And Father, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Paul wrote and he said, when we do this to examine ourselves, to look into our lives and to say, God, is there anything that I need to get out of my life? Because I want to be faithful to him and I want to be faithful to his promise. And I don't know about you, but if not for God's love, where would I be? You know, the Bible says, eye is not seen and ear is not heard. Neither is entered into the hearts of man all the things that God has prepared for those that love him. There's times and there's days whenever I stand back and I try, and I say only try, to remember where I've come from and where we would be if it wasn't for God. But this morning as we do this, I want you to truly give him thanks for the covenant that he gave in your life for God so loved the world that he gave his son and we're going to do that this morning it says that as Jesus sat there with his disciples it says that he took bread we're using a cracker same difference it's just some people get so caught up in its remembrance you can do this by yourself at home at times just let you know that to sit there and say, God, I'm going to have communion with you because I love you. And we can do that. But he took the bread. So everyone got it? We good? Okay, we'll wait a few seconds because we want you guys to be partakers too. Because you need it. <laughs> they got to love me to get to heaven, so it's all good. But he took that bread and he broke it, and I want you to break it at this time, just like he broke the bread. And I want you to take it and eat, thanking God for the body of the Son that was given for us. Jesus, we thank you for that covenant of your broken body, and by whose stripes we are healed. Then he took the cup, and he said, this is the testament of my blood. Man, awesome and amazing. Take it and drink it this time. Father, we thank you for it. And we praise you for it. And we worship you for it. As they sing this next song, 
I want you to try to imagine, and obviously we don't know for sure, but I try to do this every once in a while, and that's, where would I be if he would have stepped in my life right now? Where would I stand? What would my life look like? Wow. I'm sure glad he loves me and he loves you. Hey, Jesus loves you, thinks you're amazing. That's the power. So as we're up here, you know sometimes God like tells you to do stuff that's uncomfortable. <coughs> so he's like, they need prayer, okay. So what I want you guys to do, clearly God is hearing your hearts this morning in hearing that there's lots of people in here that need prayed over, that need prayer. And to not be afraid to ask for it when you need it. But God hears your hearts and he hears your cry this morning. He's telling me to do this and it's uncomfortable, like my hand's shaking and I'm like, really? Okay. Guys, if he is pulling at your heart right now, if you're feeling that heaviness, that you need prayer, I'm going to ask you guys to come up front here and receive that prayer this morning. And I'm sorry if I call you out, but the, the lady in the gray here, for some reason, I don't know what it is this morning, every time I look out, boom, God's like you, you. So go ahead and come up. Guys, I know there's more people that need prayer up here this morning. So don't be afraid to step forward. If I have some people in here that want to be prayer warriors over these people, come up and lay a hand on them and pray for them. God will give you the words. God sees the hearts already. And to not be afraid. Okay. God, we're giving you this moment. You see our hearts. You see these people. You know the path that they're on. God, for some reason, the prayer is needed vastly right now. So God, we lift up our words and our prayers this morning. So in these next five minutes, Jesus, we are praying it out to you. Give us some background music, amen. God, we're going to sing our hearts to you this morning. We're going to sing through the fear that's maybe crept into our hearts as we're watching things online. We're going to sing through the battles of our families. We're going to sing through the, the fear in relationships. We're going to sing 
even when the demons tell us we shouldn't, we don't care because God, you are above it all. Here we go. this morning to go before us in our lives, to maybe pull things and people out that we don't understand. Maybe they crept in and now they're wreaking havoc. God, we give you permission to start weeding things out of our lives, to start pruning the things that we physically and emotionally can't do ourselves. God, we give you permission this morning. Come on. Because I see you taking ground. I see you press ahead Cause your power is dangerous To the enemy's care Cause you still do miracles You still do what you said For you're the same God now As you've always been Cause your spirit's breaking now Cause your kingdom's 
amazing love of Jesus. Totally here today, and we love it. It's awesome. Uh, my name's Bethany. If I haven't met you yet, uh, I'm the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church, and this is my husband that sometimes pretends like he doesn't know me, and he says he picked me up on the side of the road, but it's not true. Sometimes it is. I do pick you up on the side of the road. Sometimes you do. That's true. <laughs> sometimes if something's wrong with my car, you have to pick me up on the side of the road. <laughs> We are so glad you guys are here today. We are indeed. Yeah, we have been having an awesome outreach through our Rocky Zone every Saturday night during the winter. We have three weeks left, so don't miss your chance to come out and play. And we had an awesome volunteer. men's group on Friday night. We had yes. 34 men yes, come hang awesome. out. It was so cool. We were standing there, and as the truck started pulling, it was like it was a pickup truck convention. It was. Festival. <laughs> How many trucks in the parking lot? Uh, it was lot? a lot. It was a lot of <laughs> trucks. It was pretty crazy. God's so cool, and awesome. it's so awesome and amazing. Yep. God's going to do some really incredible things in the next year through men's ministry and touch lives, and mm -hmm. God's going to raise up some mighty, crazy men of God, and it's yes. going to be really awesome and amazing. And I'm excited about what they're doing. Woohoo! It's doing amazing. So much awesome stuff. And if you're if you are new here and I haven't met you yet and I haven't chased you down and gotten your phone number yet, <laughs> um, I would love it if you would go to our website, which is yourrock.org, or you can scan the QR code. That'll take you there. You can put in your information so that we can follow up with you, let you know what's going on, see if you have any questions, um, if you need prayer. Like that's how you can reach out to us. So it's worth it. Give us your information, and and we I usually also give you a card, you know, for like free donuts. So that's also a really good reason. Donuts are good things. Yes. And by the way, there's no calories in any of our donuts because they don't come with a tag. <laughs> no tag. So just no let tag. you know, it's like no nothing's in there. Tag. It's just it's all good. It's <laughs> heavenly. It's manna from heaven. Yes. We'll just uh, go with that. Okay. Good. Sounds good. So we are having our Easter explosion coming up soon. Yeah. And if you want to give in bicycles, you can do that. If you want to give in candy, you can do that. If you want to give with m actual money, we take that too. So you can go to our website, and there's a little purple plus sign on there where you can give. Just put in your either credit card or your bank information. Both work. Or if you want to do cash or checks, we have little green boxes in the back right by the door. There's one at the Welcome Center and one at Kids Church. So that is your opportunity <laughs> to give. We don't pass an offering plate or anything like that. It's between you and God. God Absolutely. calls you to give. You should obey. That's my word. Yeah, we had a family today that brought, I don't even know how many bikes they it brought, like but they brought two carloads worth of bicycles and loaded them today. And it was like yes. really awesome yes. that they bought a whole bunch of bicycles. And I'm kind of jealous. I know. They're super cool. I know Garrett wants the green one right here with the training wheels. He already told me he wanted that, that one. That awesome. So, but anyhow, <laughs> God's good. We really appreciate how you guys give and what you guys give in we prayer do. and in fasting and reading your word and becoming spiritual and financially and mentally and, and emotionally and yes. serving and <laughs> all those things that makes God move. And it's been really cool. We had 20, I think they told me 27 kids in the first service in Children's Church. Wow. That's a lot of kids. Which is crazy to yeah, and me. And we have four babies on the way this year so far. I mean, uh, there'll probably be more. Yes. But we have four pregnant women in the church now. So that's exciting, too. It is I pretty like crazy. babies. It's I like good. other people's babies. Me, too, because you can give them back and I'm going to take them home. <laughs> yes, exactly. Don't want that. Gives me the hives just thinking about it. But anyhow, God's good. So if you want to be part of our Easter explosion, we still do yes. have time to sign up. We got t shirts ordered. Yes. If yes. you didn't. Do that. It's I okay. I did order some extras. Just sign up on your way out. Let me know uh, what size t-shirt you need and where you'd like to serve. That's Saturday, March 30th. We will be packing the candy bags coming up soon. Oh, you want the candy bag slide? Is that my hint? Oh, this one? I'm just trying. Is that what you want? Like, How's yes. that? Uh -huh. Perfect. We still need more candy, so you have two more Sundays to bring in the candy. How, isn't it hard to believe that Easter is like three weeks away? 
That's I pretty hope crazy. It's four. I'm oh, four? It's four weeks. <laughs> okay, it's three weeks away. Oh, yeah, I only have three more Rocky yeah. Zones to yes. do, huh? Yes. <laughs> That's a good if thing. If it's only three weeks away, we're going to be late. So. Hey, we have pizza back there. So if you'd oh, like a yes. par baked pizza, yes. first come, first served. We weren't really super busy last night, so they all got turned into par baked pizzas. They are pepperoni. I don't yeah. know how much they are, but they're pretty good pizza. I think it's like 13 25 13 50 something we'll like that. We'll give you a discount today, $15. Yeah. How's that? So you just go up to the donut <laughs> window and say, can I get a pizza? And they'll give you a pizza, and you just throw it yeah. in the oven for, you know, like, was it like I don't know. 10 minutes or something. Somebody told yeah. me they were hungry after the Rocky Zone, and they were eating their raw pizza on the way home from church last night. I'm like, dude, that's... We could have cooked it for you, really. <laughs> kind of interesting. You know, they're like, I was hungry. I'm like, how'd that go down? They're like, it's kind of chewy. And I'm like, okay, kinda good. Kind of chewy, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'd say what I think that tastes like or feel like, but I'm not gonna because no, we're in church, so it's don't. all good. <laughs> so anyhow, and then we've got a work day which we're planning right now for uh, March 16th, which we may be moving to a different site than this site. I don't know if we get it all done here. Yeah, we want to make sure that the outside of the campus is all ready for Easter explosion because we usually have like over a thousand people here um, for that Easter explosion. Yes. It's so and if you like to mow grass, we would love to talk to you. Yes. Because we're going to need grass it's mowers coming. this year because grass season's coming and we're going to we have a zero turn mower here which makes it pretty yeah, easy to it's mow. Pretty fast. So anyhow, if you'd like to do that, let me know and we'll yeah. let you know when it needs mowed and if you want to volunteer some time and just come, yeah. you can mow it now in about I can do it in an hour or 50 minutes somewhere. It used you're, to take us three and a half hours. You're really good at it. You on know exactly the old mower, so it's really go. nice now. So. Anyhow, and, and our rain date is March 23rd. Yes, and one more thing. I forgot to have a slide made today, but the She Is Women's Night, uh, the community night, which is free event over at Summit Church in Indiana. It's coming up this Thursday, March 7th. So if you want to come to that, you register on the Summit Church website. If you don't know where to go, let me know. And if you want to meet at the church and ride together, let me know, and I will meet Are you Are you here. gone? I'm, I'm going. I'm oh. going. I keep praying she finds Jesus when yeah. she goes. I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, but I just keep praying. This kind comes forth only by prayer and fasting, they say. No, but we're really glad you're here this morning. I seriously mean that. Um, I pray that God touches the way in this service, the way that God touched in the last service. Um, my voice is a little bit gone. I have a little bit of a cold. I'm almost better. But it's really hard to preach the way I preached in the first service, and hopefully God's going to let me do it again in the second service, because what I want to preach on again today is about the power of praise. And I guess as I've gone through these seven Hebrew words of praise again, it's been amazing how much God's shown me more. I, I love the Word of God. You know, I remember the first time I, I read my Bible, and I was like all stoked and, you know, all that kind of stuff, and I didn't have an app that read to me, and you actually had to turn pages and all that good stuff, and it was a lot of work, and I made it through, and I'm like, man, God, now what do you want me to do that I read the Bible? And he's like, read it again. So I've been reading it a lot, but, you know, it's really cool because the Word of God is alive, and it's life-giving, and I seriously mean that this morning. And, and this message this morning can radically change your life if you let it. God wants to do new things, and I, I cannot stress that enough. God is up to something so amazing and so cool and so awesome and thank god we get to be part of it and i know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that we get to be part of that and you get to be part of that if you choose to step in with what god's doing i was watching this week last week i preached on zamar which is actually praising god with instruments and all that and i went through the whole history of the church and all that and i was actually watching a video this week called jesus music has anyone else seen the video called jesus music in here if you ever get a chance and you have three, four dollars extra, watch it on uh, Amazon, it's on there, I actually bought it on Amazon. It's about the history of how we got here and all the conflicts that went into moving from where the church was to where God wants to take the church. And how many know we like to get stuck along the way? We like to get into our traditions along the way. We like to say this is the way it's always been done along the way. And when it comes to praise, I realize that same thing happens in our lives. Like because we've been raised the way that we've been raised or we were in the denomination we were in or whatever we're in or the way we got comfortable in praising God, when God wants to do a new thing, and I want you to get this, 
If you want to see something you've never seen before, you've got to be willing to do something you've never done before. Does everyone get that? You can't see the same thing driving the same road, or you can't see something new driving the same road home week after week, day after day, time after time, moment after moment. And yet so many people come into church and we stand here and we want God to do something radical in our life, but we're not willing to get radical for God. In order for God to do crazy things in your life, you've got to be willing to be crazy for Jesus. I haven't had my Jesus freak shirt on this morning because I just felt kind of freakish. Bless God, someone asked me, what am I doing? I'm like, I was tired of shaving my face, so I let it grow for a while. And yes, even I make this look good, so it's all good, okay? I don't care if you like it or not, because you are important. The only person that matters is my wife likes it. And if you don't, I don't care. It's all good, because she's the only one that matters. But anyhow, I want you to get that this morning. I want to take you on a journey this morning about praise, but not in the way you're going to think. And it's bound in a story and found in a story. And let's just get into it this morning and see what God shows up. Remember, praise appears 214 times in the King James Version of the Bible. Now, you might say, why do you use the King James Version of the Bible? Because I don't, but the Strong's Concordance is written with that as a reference. So if you want to study the words of praise, you've got to go into that to find where praise is. Now, a really interesting thing about praise, the words that we've been going through, the seven Hebrew words of praise, is not all of them are described in that version of the Bible as praise. Sometimes it is they blessed the Lord. Sometimes it is they were thankful. Sometimes it was all those things. But they're all going back to these seven Hebrew words of praise. And we've got to remember something else. The other translations, 13, 543 times throughout the Bible in those, the word praise is there. A hundred times in the Psalms, praise is there. How many know praise is important? I didn't do this search, but I think I need to someday and just put in some of the other words that the church puts way up here that is so important and praise is way down here. Praise changes the destiny of your life. And I'm not just talking about praise and worship, which is cool. I like praise and worship and I like that. But I'm talking about your personal praise life. I'm talking about your attitude towards God. Praise is about thanking God for what he's done in my life and also what he's going to do in my life. Now, if you're like Miriam and the children of Israel when you come to the Red Sea where you praise after the miracle happens, you're missing on the blessings of God. Because a lot of the blessings in your life are going to be released by you praising before it happens. Before it ever takes place in our life. You see, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and things that I have not yet seen. But I'm already thanking God for what he's doing even though I don't see the physical evidence in my life. And I'm standing there and going, God, you're good anyhow. Because I'm just going to give you praise because I know that you said... I know the plans I have for you, plans of peace and prosperity to bring you to an expected end. And I can claim that and accept that and walk in that. So we're going to go into a story this morning and get into some Hebrew word, a Hebrew word this morning. But I want you to remember this about praise. Praise tears down walls. We know that, right? From the reading the book of Joshua. We know that it takes off shackles. We know that it throws open prison doors. We know that it turns enemies one on another, and it moves the creator of this world closer into our hearts whenever we're willing to praise. I guess what amazes me is how reserved Christians are taught to be in church, what we call church. And by the way, this isn't church. This is church. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not about a building. But we've been taught in church that, well, this is how we behave. I don't know about you, but anyone else grew up in church was like this. This was what I spent a lot of time in church getting. Shh. Anyone else get shh in church? All right, so you all understand that, right? Or maybe you got, anyone get any of those? Yeah, I had a few of those in my life too. Some on the side of the head, some on the back of the head, some here and there and everywhere. You know, that's what we're taught is we're in church. You know, it's like, Can I tell you something? It's almost like they're afraid that if you sneak up in God and go, whoo, he'll get scared. But God's not scared. God's not afraid of our praise. He's not afraid of that at all. God wants us to worship him. He wants us to be excited about worshiping him. And it's not just about when things are going good, but I want to talk about what yada praise looks like. And I want to get into the Hebrew word yada. Now, it is the sixth. No, let me do my head real quick because I'm out of order. 
Okay, yes. It is the sixth Hebrew word or fifth Hebrew word that sits there. So it's almost really, really popular, but there's going to be a few that are more popular than that one. But this is a different type of phrase. And I want to take you in a story this morning. And as I was building it in my office this morning, I, my mind went to, how many remember the Brady Bunch? All right, so if you don't know the Brady Bunch, I'm dating myself. But when I was a little kid, the Brady Bunch was like happening. And I really liked the youngest girl in the Brady Bunch. And I don't remember, I didn't like Jan and I didn't like Cindy. Yeah, Cindy was one that I thought, man, I, Cindy, she was pretty cool. Yeah, but anyhow, we won't get into what happened to Cindy because, but I was thinking about this, I was sitting there and I, I made this in my office and it doesn't all work, but it's going to work most of it, okay, so be ready for this, this is my awesome rendition of it. There is a story of a lovely lady who was trapped in deception and deceit. She dreamed of being loved and cherished, but instead she became a pawn in people's games. All right, okay, well, it's close. Sometimes you just got to put yourself out there. Not too bad, right? You have to admit, pretty good, right? So just let you know. But as I was reading this story, that's what came to my mind. Because how many know the Brady Bunch is about two families that were messed up that came together and became really messed up? I don't know if you got that out of the Brady Bunch, but that they had more issues in Time Magazine, I'm just saying, at the time, okay? So, but you got to realize that, that our life, did, how many lives, people's life, has anyone's life in here turned out exactly how you thought it would? Anybody? Somebody? Nobody? How many lives turned out nothing like you thought it would? Yeah, that me too. All right, the rest of you, I don't know, you're confused. We'll pray for you, okay? You should have came up in front and got prayed for when the opportunity was there because you're severely confused, but it's okay. So we've got to understand and we've got to realize that life is not going to turn out how you expect life to turn out. That your plans and what you thought and all the ways that you thought it would be is not going to happen. And this is a story in Genesis chapter 29 where it's the epitome of that kind of thing that happens in our life. So I want to talk about her name, and her name is Leah. Leah grew up with dreams like every other woman, thinking she'd be loved, all those kind of things. And she grew up in a society that was very different than our society, in that ancient society. She has her cousin who comes from far away because he's a deceiver. He's a surplanter. His name's Jacob. He has a brother named Esau that's a mighty hunter that wanted to kill him. His mom taught Jacob how to be a deceiver and deceived his dad. Sounds like a totally functional family, doesn't it? Dysfunctional family one-on-one. You think yours is the only one that's broken? They're broken in the Bible, too. If you're looking for perfect people, don't look in the Bible. There's only one. His name's J-E-S-U-S, -S, okay? Just let you know. All the rest are severely and totally messed up, and you've got to realize you're in there, too, and you're severely messed up. Just to let you know that. So here she is. She's dreaming, you know, playing with her Barbie dolls and all those kind of things, and Ken and Barbie, and sitting there thinking about it's going to be. And she's sitting there wondering about life, and here comes this guy named Jacob, and he comes there, and he looks over, and he, she, he falls in love with her beautiful sister that she's always been number two with, you know, Rachel, the pretty one, Leah, not the so pretty one. It says she had soft eyes, which is basically a relation to, in our terms, we'd call them puppy dog eyes, all right? So she wasn't like stunningly gorgeous, but she was, she was dreaming about what her life would be like and how it would all turn out. And here comes a surf planner into life. Anyone else? Don't raise your hand. Ever have a surf planner come into your life? Somebody who schemes and connives and lies and cheats and you find out and you're like, oh my goodness, I confused myself on this one, right? I thought it was going to be this and it turns out that. Well, that's where she is. So let's go into this story a little bit and I want you to take you into Genesis chapter 29 and let you understand what goes on. But there's something here because this is where the word yada, praise, is found the very first time in the word of God. Now, you've got to learn something about God's Word. You need to sometimes know the first times because there are important lessons that go on through 
that history of the Word of God. So here's Leah, minding her own business, her, her, her disguise in love with her, his, his, her sister, and it's wonderful. Her sister comes up and says, oh, Jacob's going to marry me. He's going to work for seven years, and it's going to be so wonderful. And, you know, they're getting ready to plan the wedding and all that stuff, and she's getting her nails done. Rachel is, and all that kind of stuff, and her hair braided, and all that stuff, shaving her underarms. It's a really wonderful thing. You know, she's really getting it together. And it's really going to be awesome, but something happens in the story that doesn't turn out that way. It's kind of like your story, where you thought everything was going to happen, and you were shaving your underarms, thinking it was going to be wonderful, and you find out, maybe you need to shave them today. I don't know. It's a word from God. I don't know. But anyhow, you're doing all those kind of things, and you're thinking it's all going to be wonderful, and it's going to turn out right, and then life happens. How many know life can be pretty cruel sometimes? How many know what we thought was going to happen and what happens is totally two different things and, and you end up and you stand there and go, wow, this is crazy. I didn't never expected this. Well, let's get into Leah's story and find out what happens. It says, Laban replied, so she sits there on, her, on this night, her sister's wedding night, and her, her dad, who's named Laban, sits there and says, oh, by the way, I have a surprise for you, Leah. I found a husband for you and it's your sister's boyfriend. And he thinks he's going to get Rachel, but I need his labor for seven more years, so you're going to be the stand-in. And, you know, can't blame, I mean, Leah has nothing to do in this story, but she's just thrown into it. Do you understand that? So Jacob, you know, in his wedding night, he gets drunk, and he wakes up in the morning and finds out that he got the wrong woman. There's moral to that story on your wedding night, don't get drunk. To wake up with the wrong person in the morning, make sure you stay good enough that you know what you're getting, and one shake your head and go, yes, that's a good idea, all right? Well, Jacob, he's like having a good time, pardon, he wakes up in the morning, man, he had fun that night, and all that good stuff happened, and he rolls over and goes, <gasps> And he stomps out of his wedding room tent and runs over and sees his father-in-law and says, you tricked me. Who is he? He's a surplanter. How many know what we sow, we reap? And at that moment, Jacob's shocked because he's never been surplanted. He's always been the surplanter. Everyone get that? Everyone know what a surplanter is? It's called a used car salesman. Okay, you all got that right there. Oh, driven by grandma all the time. Yeah, lie. Well, Jacob's there, and this time he's the one on the end. And I can't get into the story of Jacob and Esau and all that stuff because I don't want to get there. I want to tell you Leah's story. And can you imagine Leah? So he runs over and he says, it is not our custom here to give you the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. You didn't know you got buy one, get one free, did you? But that's where he finds himself, and he's like, but imagine the being the one that's free. Because this was never Leah's plan. Leah never thought this is how her marriage would be. Leah never thought this was how her family would be. Leah didn't want a surplanter, a schemer, a conniver named a Jacob who would sit there and do that. And that's what Jacob means, a surplanter and schemer. He who grabs the heel, those kind of things. And he's sitting there and, and she's like, what's going on? And it says, finish the daughter's bride a week, then we will give you the younger one also. Does everyone get this? So you get a weak honeymoon with a guy who's waiting for your sister to show up on the scene. Anyone want to sign up for this plan? Oh, I thought the Word of God was all full of, like, good blessings and all that kind of stuff. No, here's Leah sitting there and going, how did I get in this mess? I, I was just, you know, dreaming about getting a husband someday. Now, not only, I thought I was getting away from my sister someday, and now my sister's going to be in my life all my life. How many know this is a pretty crazy story? I don't know if you feel it or not, but I felt, as I studied this this week and thought about this week, I felt Leah's pain. Because I don't know about you, I can't even imagine this, because she did nothing wrong. She wasn't supposed to be involved in this. She's just the one stuck in the middle of it. She's just the one that, because of all the mess going on around her, and because of her dad, and because of the people, and the whole family. You know, I literally get from this with Laban be a schemer that the whole family had issues. Because this is really Jacob's uncle. Everyone get that? 
So the whole, the whole family needs therapy. They need to get counseling, which they totally skipped out on, which is all good because God's in the control, all right? So Leah's sitting there, so Jacob, of course, he goes to work and all that kind of good stuff, and he, he gets there, and, and Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then Laban gave his daughter Rachel to be his wife. So now on your week after your wedding, you're sitting there and saying, oh, it's so wonderful you got married. Yeah, my sister's now there. How many say broken? That's broken, right? Crazy. I mean, this is the stuff you'd read in a tabloid. I mean, this is something you'd find on the internet that's not true, but here she is living in it. And now, for years, everyone say for years, Leah is going to be stuck in a mess. I want you to understand that, you know what, this is how we feel many times in our lives as we walk through life and we expected this, but now we find ourselves here. And we feel like Leah. Where we're standing there and we, we're sitting there and going, this is not what I dreamed of. This is not what I thought would happen. This was nothing that I expected. But God sees her and it says, Laban gave his servant girl Bilah to daughter Rachel as her maid servant Jacob lay with Rachel also. And he loved Rachel more than Leah. So now, not only did I get thrown in this, I got a guy who I'm second best to. Everyone get that? My sister was the sexy one. She was the good looking one. I was the puppy dog eyes one. I was the one that I was hoping to find someone love me. But now I've always lived in the shadow of my sister. But now all my life I'm going to have to live in the shadow of my sister. You getting that? I want you to understand this situation. This isn't fun. This isn't pleasant. And you might sit there and say what? But you know what? God is awesome at turning situations that you didn't plan for where it's not the way you thought it'd be. God is the miracle working supernatural God who sits there and says just because you think you've been dealt this hand it doesn't mean that I'm not working in your situation and I'm not going to move in your situation and you're not going to be blessed in your situation because God's plans overrule all other man's plans and all of evil's plans so as I sit there and I went on it and he worked for Laban another seven years and something happens it says in this next verse it says when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved maybe this morning you're sitting in a relationship where you're not loved and you know what that feels like I pray not but you know what how many know it happens how many know it takes place so there's someone there that feels your pain, but that's not the end of the story. You see, we can get stuck there and cry about it, whine about it, and feel sad about it, and get depressed about it, and get anxious about it, and all those kind of things, and let the devil be something. This is nothing, but or we can turn to God and say, God, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. And it says, when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, she opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Everyone get that? This is really important that you understand this because God sits there and wants to bless and God blesses through the fruit of the womb and by generation going to generation to generation because the change and the awesome part of this family is there is a promise of a redeemer. There is a promise of a hope. There's a promise of being a chosen people. There's a promise of having a future. There's a promise that is there that has been taught from Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob and they have this promise that's there. And here she is. She sat there and Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben. For she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. But what do you think happened? He didn't. Because how many know this and maybe you've experienced it and you don't have to raise your hand. But where you try to make someone love you. But no matter how much you try to make someone love you, guess what? You can't make someone love you. You sit there and you want people to love you, but you find out that, you know what, you can't control that. And it's okay because God's not done. So it goes on and the story starts and gone again. And the next scripture comes along, she conceived again. And when she gave birth to this son, she said, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, she, he gave me this son, so she named him Simeon. Maybe this time. Maybe I've given enough now. 
Do you realize the amount of time that's passing? It's not just, you know, we read the Bible and it's like verse 1, verse, 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 verse. This is years. I don't know how long, but it's at least nine months to have a, the baby. And then, you know, you've got to recover and then you have another baby. So this has gone on for years. This isn't just something that just all of a sudden happened. And, you know, these are just popping out. And there we go. We got kid number one. She's not having a litter of puppies. Right? First one we'll call Reuben, second one we'll call Simeon. No, this is work. This is living life every day. I don't even know if you understand this, but you leave, read this story later in their life. She literally sits there and, and gets mandrakes in order to have Jacob come lie with her again, and she conceives again later in life. So, you know, she's sitting there fighting for this attention all the time, wanting the love of her husband who's not giving her any love. And it goes on, and it says in the next verse, we get another one, and it says... Again, she conceived, and when she gave birth to this son, she said, Now at last my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons, so she named him Levi. Now, now he's going to be attached to me. Man, I got three sons, my sister has none. I'm in the lead, man. He ought to be loving me. I'm like, I'm like the man machine. I can keep giving them sons. How many know in this culture it was important? It's like I got a son. I got another son. I got another son. My God, sons. It's really awesome. It's really cool. Over here is Rachel, and she's sitting there. She's the beautiful one, and God closed her womb up because God has a plan, and God wanted to show you and I a story and let you and I understand something, that God takes those situations and turns them to blessings. So now we're going to get to the word yada. Are you ready for this? So what do you think happens? She gets pregnant again. And this time, God's finally going to break through to her heart. And it's going to be a message to you and I. It says she conceived again and she gave birth to a son. And she said, this time, I will praise the Lord. This time, I don't care what my husband thinks. This time, I don't care that I've been in a deceptive marriage. This time, I don't care that everything and all my expectations have been messed up. You see, this is a message of hope that God hid in the Word of God for every person who comes along in life that is Aaliyah. And that is every person that comes along. Because all of us have these dreams and these ideas, and we sit there, and if we aren't careful, we can become depressed and angry and bitter and mad because we're like, this isn't how life was supposed to turn out. This isn't the way, God. God, you said you love me, and here I am. She could have stayed there, but in this moment, she gets a revelation. In this moment, she gets it into her spirit, into her heart, where she says something. And we come up with the word yada. What is yada? Yada is praise, but it's different. Yada is lifting up your hands. I'm going to go forward so I can actually give you the definition and we'll come back to it. that scripture finish. It says to use, hold out the hand physically to throw a stone, an arrow at or away, especially to revere or worship with extended hands extensively. So really what he's talking about here, he's talking about this. This is yada. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Right? You've seen that, right? It didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. And someone thought they were winning. You're like, woo! Right? Yeah, I won. That's a yada. Uh, it's not like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Right? Woo, hoo, hoo, yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be bad, right? Your enemy thought he was going to knock you down. He thought he was going to take you out. Thought he was going to spoil your life. Thought he was going to make you a reject. But in the middle of it, you realize that, you know what? I can either sit here and cry about this, or I can sit here and understand I'm blessed of God, that he's making me fruitful, that he's anointing my life, that there's blessings in it, that in the middle of all the chaos and the craziness in my life, that there's an, a miracle working God that says it's not finished unless you want it to be finished, that I call you a conqueror that I call you an overcomer, that I call you blessed in the Most High God, that you're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the field, that everything you lay your hand to will prosper, and that the curse that people are trying to put in your life and the devil tried to put you in that situation where you had no choice of, you had no decision of, you didn't even want to be there, but God says, you got there, but now I'm still God. You know, that's what God wants to do in your life. You're going to get this because I ain't done yet. Because when I sat there in my office and I started reading this, Ben, God started talking to me. I like when the Holy Spirit starts talking to me. And he starts giving me divine revelations. And I sat there and God said something to me. And I, I got to read this to you. So she named him Judah. But his name is Yahada. 
And that word comes from the word yada. You didn't know that, did you? You see, this guy is now called Judah, which is the root word from yada. That every time this word is going to be spoken, every time this word is going to be said, that word means praise. I don't know if you know that or not, but Judah is praise. And that's where the Bible says he will be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, if you know any of your word of God, and David was from the tribe of Judah. You getting that? You understanding that? As I sat there, God started showing me something. He said, Terry, do you realize she was rejected? Do you realize she was sitting there where she never expected her life to turn out this way, just like all of us? Everyone, give me a Presbyterian nod. All of us. But you know what? It doesn't have to be over unless you choose to sit there in your pain and live in your pain and live in your depression and live in your wah all your life. Or you can sit there and make up your mind and say, it doesn't matter. I'm not staying there. I'm going to praise the Lord in your face, devil. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But as I sat there, God showed me something. If you read the name above Judah, it is named Levi. Does anyone spiritual in here know what comes out of the tribe of Levi? The priesthood. I want you to get that. Anyone know what comes out of the tribe of Judah? David, the kings, the lineage of the Messiah. Did you know that? Isn't that really cool? I sit there and God's like, Terry, do you realize I took this woman's pain and I turned it into the greatest blessings in all of the word of God? Oh, Rachel, the pretty one, has children. You know what their names are? Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin becomes one tribe. Joseph becomes two tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. Well, what happened to the pretty girl's tribes? Did you ever study that? Well, I know because I've read it and studied it. So the pretty girl's tribe, Benjamin ends up being almost totally and completely annihilated not long after this whole story goes on because of their sin, and they become the least of all the tribes of Israel. Do you know that? Ephraim and Manasseh, they are of Joseph's inheritance, the one who went to Egypt and obeyed God. But you know what the fame of Ephraim and Manasseh is? They settled on the wrong side of Jordan. That's what they did. So the beautiful ones, when I look at the tribes, I realize that guess what? The one who had everything going for her, God said, that's not where my blessing goes. Someone's going to get really smiley right here. You understand this. If you're a little ugly, it's okay. (laughs) Because God's not looking in the mirror and saying they really look good. God's sitting there and says, you're my Leah. That's good news. How many know that's good news? Some of you need to high-five the person beside you and say, see, told you so. Glory to God. It's all good. We spend a lot of time in America trying to look good. And I'm all for women painting barns. Don't get me wrong. I just say that every chance I get. I am a fan of makeup. My wife has to love me to get to heaven, so I'm safe in these conversations. It's all good. But you know how much time we sit there trying to be that? And men, we try to be handsome and good-looking and all those things in the lies of the world when God's sitting there saying, my heart's for the Leah's. My heart's for the person who sits there and understands that, you know what, their life didn't turn out the way they thought it would. My heart's for the people that sits there and says, and can I tell you something? You know how I know that's true? I'm about ready to get excited. I don't know how some of you stay so calm. I'm totally serious about this. Because when I follow this guy who comes along later out of the line, out of the tribe of Judah, his name's Jesus, he didn't hang around the pretty. He didn't hang around the popular. He didn't hang around the handsome. He went into the gutters, and he went to the prostitutes, and he went to the tax collectors. And he went to the people that were sick and he went to the lepers and he went to all the rejects in the world trying to tell them, listen, I'm the God of rejects. How does it feel to be a reject this morning? She got it. Some means need to get that. 
Because some of are so busy talking about the pain you've been through and the situations you've been through and how it's not been fair and it's not right. And if I came from a different family, that you don't realize that God puts you right smack dab where you are to be a testimony of the wonder-working power of God where God can take your life as Aaliyah and say, listen, you were Aaliyah, but I'm going to make you of the family of God and I'm going to bring blessings out of you and I'm going to touch you and I'm going to use you and I'm going to anoint you and I'm going to make you a testimony for all the world to see. By the way, you know, I know that because I'm the, of the priesthood of the Levites, bless God, because God calls me a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, but I'm also of the line of the tribe of Judah, who's my father, and bless God, he blesses me and walks with me and talks to me and fills me with the Holy Spirit and gives me the authority to go before his throne night or day. I'm blessed in both covenants. Isn't that amazing? Man, you got to get this. You see, God said, are you going to live in your pain or are you going to rejoice in the pain? You see, this is what praise is all about. A lot of you are sitting here waiting for God to change every situation in your life and line it up and then you're going to give him praise. We come in here and we sing and I say, come on, lift up your hands. He's like, I lift up man someday, whatever. You just don't understand that's not the way I'm wired. It ain't a matter of the way you're wired. It's a matter of whether or not you want the blessing. You got to get that. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't matter how you're wired. It matters about you being hungry for the blessing. Oh, goodness. Someone's going to get mad. You see, some of you want God to do the miracle, then you'll praise him. God tells me to praise him before the miracle comes. God tells me to be excited about him before it happens. We got way too many Christians in the American church that's the only time we want to praise them. And by the way, it's really fun to go to concerts. I like going to Elevation Worship. I like going to Hillsong. I like going to see some people worship and getting in there and getting in. It's really good. It's like, whoa, it's really good. But then you got to go back to life. They wouldn't go, yep. You know, it's really easy to praise God. Some of you this morning, it's like, man, if I could just live in church all the time. You are the church. You're living in church all the time. You're the church of the Most High God. So the day you get that and understand that, you see, the choice is what are you going to do in the place where you're stuck? That was Leah's decision. I can try to get them to love me or I can realize I am loved. I can try to get people to get it, or I can just sit there and say, you know what, God? You made me this way. God made me strange on purpose to entertain you. Hard to believe I used to be an introvert. I don't know what happened to it, but it got broke somewhere down the road. If you get this, your life and your destiny is going to be transformed. If you'll begin to praise God in the devil's face and say, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm going to praise the Lord. If you'll move in that direction and walk in that way, God is going to change the direction, the outcome of your future by you making the choice to praise him before the miracle happens. Ooh, it's going to get good. By the way, the praise releases the miracle. You see, some of you want to be Old Testament Christians who die in the wilderness. You know what those are? They're the ones who always praise after it happens. You're the one, who, but after you praise for a while and you get the same blessing, you begin to complain. I'm so tired of manna. I just really want some quail. If he was really God, he'd send me some quail. So you know what God does? God sends them quail until it comes out their nostrils and it's in their armpits. I don't want them about armpits today, but it's just where I am. It's the pits is all I can tell you. And he sends them quail until it's like knee deep and they're like so sick of quail. And you know what? Did you ever read it where they never, Garrett, they never thank God for the quail? They never thank God for the manna. They never, oh, Moses, you just brought us out in this wilderness. You told us we were going to find Jesus, but we're dying of a thirst here. When you read that, every time I read it, I want to slap them. I'm like, you are the stupidest people. No, no wonder he put you into Egypt. You still didn't learn. I mean, I can't see God bringing them out of water out of the rock. Water comes out of the rock. Man, if we would just see God, God talks to them and they say, don't talk to us anymore. I mean, when I read the Old Testament, they seriously should have had a counseling trailer with them. 
They all needed support sheep. I'm just telling you. They just never got it. Where's your life at? Where are you at in your walk and your talk with God? Are you sitting there complaining or that God's not doing it? Or are you going to be willing to be a Leah where you sit there and say, you know what? I'm going to praise God right here in this spot. How powerful is it? It is so powerful that that's where Jesus' birth starts. Right there. Of the tribe of Judah. I don't know if you get that or not. Do you realize the historical crazy spot that God is trying to say, look where my promised son comes from? Judah. From the place where this woman who was rejected, this woman was broken, this woman had her sister to put up with, competition all her life. I just, I can't even imagine. I was trying to put myself in, first of all, I'm not a woman, so I couldn't find my feminine side to do it. But I couldn't imagine sitting there and trying to put myself in that woman's shoes. But I don't know about you. I want to be there where I go, yeah. Devil, it seems like you're going to destroy me. It seems like you're going to kill me. It seems like my life fell apart, but yada. Yabba dabba do. That'll do too. Just had to say that because it fit. Would you stand with me this morning? I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you need to listen to what I'm about to say because it's from God. I'm never supposed to point a finger when you preach. They always say you go like this because fingers point at people and that's finger racist. Some of you this morning need to make up your mind and make up a decision. Are you going to keep living in that life where it's been dealt that way or are you going to become a Leah who says, you know what, God? I'm done. I'm not pleasing people around me anymore. I'm not trying to get them to love me anymore. I'm not trying to get my kids to like me anymore. I'm not trying to get my dog to like me anymore. I am making up my mind, God, that I'm going to praise you right here from this day on. If I could take you ever to a breakthrough in somebody's life, this is one of the biggest breakthroughs that have ever took place in the Word of God where this woman made up her mind, I'm done. I'm not naming any more kids for my husband's sake so he loves me. God, my life's yours. And God, on that day, Ross looked over at his son and the Holy Spirit and said, Levi becomes the priesthood. Judah's where my son, Jesus, that's where you're coming out of. Right there. That, that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for someone to get that. That moment literally released God's promise. That moment literally was the start of tribes and people being born that would carry this whole thing all the way through. And whenever you read it, it's on purpose that you read down through the lineage of Jesus. And there is Judah. Right there. What's that mean, Pastor? Right there is your salvation. Right there is where it starts. In every one of our lives. Listen, I know what it's like to be broken. I'm not going to share my story, but I know I had to come to this place where I declared Judah. Where I said, yada, yada, yada. I'm not trying to please anyone else anymore. I'm done. It's that choice that anybody, everyone say with me, anybody. You're that anybody who will come to this point in their life and say, God, this isn't where I want to turn out. I can keep sitting, fighting with my wife. I can keep fighting with my kids. I can keep kicking my dog. I can keep doing all those kind of things. 
Or God, I can make up my mind that God, I'm going to see you in this place where I am right now. I'm letting go and I'm letting you write a new destiny in my life. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm letting you write a new destiny in my rest of my life. And God, I'm not living in this spot anymore. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say. I'm done pleasing people. And God, I'm letting go right now. And I'm saying, God, I'm letting you in my life. And I'm pouring out my life to you. And I'm saying, God, no more of this. You're writing my life this time. Judah is his name. I will praise him, devil, in the face of this storm. I will worship him in the middle of my night. I will glorify him in the middle of my sickness. If I die of cancer, praise God. If I get run over by a car, praise God. But devil, I will rise from the grave just like Jesus did. I will stand with the King of Kings. I will be with the Lord of Lords, and I'm going to do it glorifying, magnifying, praising, worshiping. When they come against me and say I'm divorced, my family's broken, I'll declare yada, 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 and I will see God move in my behalf. That's this moment of your life. Man, I feel God in this place. Now I'm going to give you a chance because we're going to sing praise. I don't know about you, but as I sing this, I'd get my fist ready. And I'd say, devil, you better get ready for some fist pumping. And I ain't going to be pumping. Because I'm tired of this and I'm over this. I'm tired of telling people who and what I am. Yeah, I made mistakes. Yeah, I screwed up. Yeah, I aborted a baby. Yeah, maybe I was a prostitute. Yeah, I did drugs. Yeah, I cheated. Yeah, I lied. But you know what? Yada! No more. God's going to take it into a testimony for his glory. Yada! Now, I'm giving you a chance this morning. It's your choice. Online, you listen to me. Yada! At home. It's time, church, for the church to be the church. Listen, I don't care what Joe Biden does. He's king. Yada! Congress does not make my destiny. Yada! It doesn't matter if Donald Trump wins or loses. Yada! It doesn't matter if we have an economic collapse. Yada! Because God in all those places said he, could, he sent ravens to feed people. He brought manna down from heaven. He brought quail into camps. He brought water out of rock. What are you worried about? Yada. Should be nada. But God wanted it to be Yah. Yah, we do that. Yah. Sing it. Jesus loves you, thinks you're amazing. Praise is a shout that 